we did not hold meetings during the summer. There were several committees hard at work. Kathy Harden and Stephanie Roberts took a detailed inventory and bag clothing for homeless referred to as Tri-City Health and PUSD. Kathy and Stephanie also scheduled two mini deliveries to test the safety measures in OSB. And um, we had they had outfitted the OSB with plastic guards, put, put symbols on the floor of where to stand. It was a very, very big effort that they did, and I really appreciate it. They served a total of 10 families and 35 children. Um, they staggered appointment times, did not allow the families to touch the clothing, which, by the way, we still do not do. And members worked on a new dental flyer and distributed 25,000 of those flyers through the PUSD. Um, sadly, we had to delay the reopening of the dental center, which usually reopens in the month of August. In September, Stephanie Mann took the reins on the ALBD Halloween scavenger hunt taking place in October. Since we could only attempt vir virtual fundraisers, this was a big deviation from our normal events. The committee started a meeting in September and met every few weeks to discuss how we were going to pull it off. Um, and I think the dental center reopened in September, am I right? I couldn't find my notes on it, but I think it finally opened on once a, day, once a week on Tuesdays in September. In October, we held our first ever great ALPV Halloween haunt. This was definitely outside our normal wheelhouse but it went off without a hitch thanks to the committee. We had 2017 registrations, although only 18 showed up to participate. And while not well attended, all who, are, who participated agreed that it was a fun, fun event. And that's why they're holding it again this year. So hopefully more people will participate. This, brought, this event brought in about $5,200. So nothing to sneeze at. You know, every dollar counts, especially in a pandemic year. Uh, during this month, we also re received a $10,000 grant from the Doyle Foundation. Uh, this grant provide mon provides money to nonprofits to support uh, resourceful communities. Uh, Ron, Ron Kovas, who was our grant writer at the time, uh, was responsible for reaching out to this foundation. In November of 2020, we launched a new smaller fundraiser with Lynch Creek Farms, and lo and behold, we're doing it again. And again, it's not a lot of money, but it's an easy way to raise money. Um, and those that purchased the lease or other Christmas decor provided 15% of their purchase price to ALPB. Stephanie Mann was responsible for this event, and so, you know, even, like I said, even small dollars matter, especially in a very restricted year. In December, uh, understanding that we were not treating many children in our dental center, we voted and agreed that we would intensify our efforts to reach out to the low-income adults. Dr. Elba had noticed that parents bringing in the children were in great need of dental work. And although we had begun treating adults earlier in the year, this is the month that we really stepped up. Our thoughts were that if an adult brought in a child with dental count, we would provide free of charge dental care to the to parents and families. Active giving was handled very differently this year. Kathy and Stephanie shopped and provided Christmas kits with small food items and gift cards to the families that were submitted by PUSD. These were all based on the donations that everyone gave to help out. In January, we awarded Mitzi Barker with the Ada Edwards Laughlin Award. I think this is the first time, no, this is not the first time, sorry. This award is granted to members who provide exemplary behind the scenes work to support the organization. Mitzi always works tirelessly to keep our property in order. During COVID, she started and continues to this day making masks for anyone who needed and asked for them. She works in the back room with OSB stocking shelves, unpacking boxes, folding clothes, and tidying up. She just can't help herself. <laughs> I expect she'll probably be doing it next week <laughs> with her bad hip, <laughs> or her newly restored hip. She actually might be doing 
<laughs> She's probably me. She is active in all committees along with chairing the team. These are areas that often don't get recognition because they are not in view of the entire membership. But we couldn't get along without her attention to these details. Hmm? And cookies. Oh, yeah. and, oh, and cookies. She brings us cookies. Oh, yeah. Really important. Oh, yeah. And in good. February, yeah. Missy led a key tea committee to prepare for a virtual tea. Kathy Harden, Stephanie, and Mitzi completed tea baskets to auction off on our virtual site. Stephanie Mann created tea recipe books that we offered for sale. The committee not only met the fundraising goal of $12,000, but they exceeded it. The total revenue was $14,436. I tell you, for a COVID um, time of, of our century <coughs> to not have face-to-face -face time, and we were able to make that much money on a virtual team, I am astounded, and I'm sure most of you are too. All, kudos go to all of you. All of you who worked hard for it, who donated to it to make it successful. It's so appreciated. Um, we had to close the dental center for the month. Um, Fear of COVID and other medical conditions prevented us from having a full staff. In March of 2020, we received a $120,000 grant from the Cal Wellness Foundation. This is to be used exclusively for dental treatments for low-income adults and seniors. Ron Clovis was also responsible for leading us to this good fortune. He and Roger worked very hard on it. The timing was so fortuitous because this is when we were starting to see an uptick in adults at the dental center. In April, the nominating committee did a spectacular job of putting together a complete board for this new year. I have to admit, I was a bit worried about it, but it's a great board and we are in good hands. I, I am so excited. Be sure I'm not excited because I'm not on it. I'm excited because it's a really good board. Not that we haven't had good boards, but it was something that I was always worried about, that you know, people weren't stepping up to, to hold a board position. And I was really concerned about it because we hadn't had a full board for a while. We have a full board this year. So please appreciate it. In May, Stephanie Mann submitted an application to Tri City Community Wellbeing for a grant to expand OSB. She had asked for $10,000. We thought it was a long shot because it seemed like this was just for a mental health kind of a. Um, philanthropic organization, but we really decided it was worth the try. And the application was accepted and we received a $6,000 grant that allows us to furnish the clothing for the older children. So when, when Kathy was talking about it earlier, this is how we're able to afford that, to have special clothes for those older kids. So thank you, thank you, Stephanie Mann. And this is the golf tournament month, um, and we are all grateful that it was on. It was a huge success, and we owe a great deal of gratitude to Renee Sipple, Kathy Rockwell, and Laura Romano, Romero, not to mention all the committee members who worked hard to make this tournament a success. It was a great way to end the year. The tournament brought in $109,000, which was $16,000 higher than projected. Again, how are we doing this in a pandemic year? Well, um, to sum it all up, in OSB we treated, we treated, we served 1,400 children. That was higher than in our prior years. Um, we submitted 3,268 voting hours to NAL. Uh, we had 604 hours to, for our non-voting members. And we had 15 volunteers who participated with 213 hours. Now this is far less than we've had in the past, about 3,000 hours far less. But again, we were very limited in scope and what we could do and how people could help. So this wasn't unexpected and it's not, and it's not to be sneezed at because these were still very good hours and a lot of work went into 
whatever we did all year. Um, you know, when we did the budget, we expected a deficit of $6,000 during the year. We ended up the year with a surplus of $225,000. How's that to work through a pandemic? How's that? Congrats to all. So that wraps up the year. Now I just want to wrap up my presidency. <laughs> a little over three years ago, I stood at this podium for the first time. Well, I was scared. At that time, I didn't even know your names. Now I know them, I just forget them. <laughs> <coughs> I was very anxious about this appointment. I didn't know how the ALP was run, and even less about Robert's Rules of Order, which I still don't know. <laughs> Thankfully, so many of you stepped up, especially Lynn. She stepped up to help me out and mentor me when I needed it, and that was very often. At that time, I had vowed to recruit new members, and I'm really sorry to say that I failed. We would get them in, and then some would leave. So the membership really stayed status quo. We just didn't get them. And then the minute I leave, <laughs> what happens when three or four new members? <laughs> so, Thank you, Jane. <laughs> um, however, we did manage to get some great and advantageous relationships going. Uh, we have made any number of contacts with the city. We have branded ourselves so that we are now recognized by other social service organizations within the city of Pomona. We are active in the Pomona Chamber of Commerce, and through these activities, we make contacts that have proven to be of value to ALPB. You know, I met Ron through meeting with the mayor, and Ron is the one that brought us all those grants. I met Brian Moody through meeting with the mayor, um, who has helped us in designing the tea um, invitation, <coughs> taking pictures for us, and he spreads the word for us. Um, so, although I haven't increase the roll call of ALPD. Uh, I believe that through our efforts of networking, and everybody's helping with the efforts of networking, attending events for the city, churches, and other organizations, we are becoming known for our contributions to the city. And this is something that is not going to go away. This has to be done um, whenever the need calls. And I have I have uh, promised Jane that I would continue to work at networking, to continue to go to the chamber events, to continue to go wherever I was asked to go uh, to help out in an unofficial capacity, but to help ALPB and to all the children that I have grown to really love. You know, that all of you have become my family and, and the community that I serve is very important to me. So while the work is still done, not done, um, we still have to get out there and because there are many that still do not know us. As, as referenced, it was Jane who said that um, um, Debbie did not know who we were. She'd gone by our, our, house, our chapter house millions of times. She thought it was a homeless shelter or she thought that maybe it was a defunct organization because there's never any cars in the parking lot. She didn't know, you know, she just doesn't know. And it's surprising to me that even people from other states where um, assistance league exists in other states, they haven't heard of the assistance league. We're not well known like the Rotary Club or the Lions Club or the Optimist Club. And to tell you the truth, I think that's part of National's fault that they haven't done a national program and marketing program to get the name out there. So, because they're not helping, we have to do it. So, whatever that means, whether it means putting banners outside our parking lot saying who we are, or going to all the events, you know, these things are all things that we have to consider and all things that need to get done. If we want to get the sponsorships and the donations that we need, 
to keep us going. Of course, we need members too, but uh, I think that will come when people know who we are. The effort is so worth it. I thank you for placing your trust in me these past three years. I have discovered strengths in me that I never knew existed. I am grateful for your friendships and compassion. To all my various board members, I can't tell you how important you were to me. I mean, I relied on each and every one of you throughout the years. And while we didn't always agree, the various, various voices are very vital to the success of an organization. It's only in disagreement that we learn to listen and discuss other opinions. A successful organization does not run on one opinion or one point of view alone. So, in closing, I want to say how proud I am of the new board, and I'm excited to see where they take us. Thank you. Now, Jane, can you come up here? I think so. Oops, wait a minute. Thank you so much for participating in the community. Oh, um, it's just, it's my community too. I know, I know. So I want to officially <laughs> pass this panel. <laughs> Oh, here it is. This is for your desk. You got this. Oh. <laughs> 